What is up? Welcome back. 2023-2024 NBA season previews. My name is Matt Hannafin. Jermite, what are you doing? Uh, got I got my wires tangled. Oh. Well, we're going to be talking about the Golden State Warriors, by the way. Oh, wait. You got a, got a chance to finally put this thing to work. Oh, my God. Talking about, talking about Chef Curry here today. <laughs> what a way to start this episode. Absolutely. Probably the most bizarre intro that we've had yet, but welcome back, 2023-2024 NBA season previews. That's in the mile, that's in the camera. Uh this was kind of like this intro was like it's kind of a description of like the Warriors last season. It was crazy and chaotic. Uh you don't know what to expect at any turn. No one got punched in this intro, and no one will get punched in this intro, but uh, That's like virtually impossible. Yeah, practically impossible. We're we're both on opposite sides of the country. Um, I probably deserve to get punched though, like for how much I've talked. Um, but <laughs> anyways, Jermaine, what's going on, man? How's it going? Uh, you know, I'm good. Uh, I don't know how long I'm gonna have this chef's hat on because it's like maybe a size too small for my head. And I gotta get get myself a custom one with my name on it and everything pretty soon. But uh, no, but yeah, other than that, uh, pretty good. Talk about the Golden State Warriors, the dynasty that just won't die. Where'd you get that, by the way? Uh, I got a friend. I'm just I'm just kidding. It's Amazon. I got it off Amazon. <laughs> okay. I, I think I only got it for like maybe less than ten dollars. Like something like that would be around, like around that price, five ten bucks. Hey, it's a it's a it's a good investment. Absolutely a good investment. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, they finished forty four and thirty eight last season. Uh, six in the West. They got bounced in, or no, they won in seven games through the Sacramento Kings, but then lost uh, to the Los Angeles Lakers in the ensuing round. It didn't really feel that close. I think it was what six games. I think it was six games in that league. I think so. It didn't feel all that close. Anthony Davis turned in to like one of the best defensive players. Like at least, at least he looked like one of the best defensive players of this generation. He looked like his old self when he was in New Orleans. And even better than that. And the Warriors just couldn't keep pace. Uh it was just a very uneven season for Golden State. They were top ten in offense. They were, I think, 14th in defense. Uh the vibes just were not good. With the with the Draymond Green punching Jordan Poole, and we really can't talk about last season's Warriors without discussing that. And I mean, they they traded Jordan Poole away in the offseason for Chris Paul, uh, a 38 year old Chris Paul, and they re signed Draymond Green literally the first minute of free agency. It was announced that he signed a four year, $100 million deal. It, just felt like they had to get rid of Jordan Poole at some point. And then uh, just to keep that core together, they want to keep it core, keep it together longer, which I don't blame them. Uh, they, they have a lot of money allocated to just four or five guys with Steph making 52 million a year with Thompson, with Clay Thompson making 43 million a year with Chris Paul making 30 million a year uh, with Andrew Wiggins on the books for 24 million. And then Draymond on the books for 22 million, um, which was a pay cut for Draymond. He probably could have made more um, if they had a lower cap number, but weird vibes last season. They had to make some sort of decision, some sort of move. I don't think it was Draymond going to be the guy on the way out, so it was Jordan Poole in the end. Uh, but where do you see this? Where did you see this team last season? How do you think uh, all of that shapes up for this upcoming season? I would say the uh... – the season, like it overshadowed a great season from Steph Curry. Um, the kind of like a full season worth of Clay Thompson, if I'm not mistaken, after the yeah. ACL and Achilles injuries, which took us took away around like two nearly two years or probably two full seasons of Clay Thompson. Um, and then pretty much Steph Curry, he's ageless, like I said before we even started. I think he's like the Tom Brady of baseball, you argued LeBron a little bit, but I think, basketball. yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Basketball. <laughs> Tom Brady of baseball is crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, Steph, I think he's going to play as long as he wants to. I think 
he's like he's only really gotten just more and more lethal with age. Like this past season, he averaged 29 a game. Uh, and just two seasons ago, he put up 32 a game at age 32. And even last year, you know, 26 and won the championship, got his first finals MVP. Um, I think that um, Golden State keeping that core together, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I mean, obviously, it grew, like they've already have the proven track record. But I think that um, last year was kind of very telling. Um, I don't think that team is good enough to beat a Denver Nuggets team. I'm, like the Lakers got better and they lost to the Lakers last year. I'm not sure if Chris Paul, that addition is going to put them over the top. Honestly, like I wouldn't even be surprised if like halfway through the year, Chris Paul and like just that fit either doesn't work or they may just look to move Chris Paul elsewhere and just try to um, just get, get assets for him. But um, I feel like it'll be real interesting to see that fit with, uh, with like CP coming off the bench and um, kind of like how all that stuff's going to play out because like that core is aging. They, their window. Um, I mean, obviously I can say their window seems like it's getting smaller and smaller because obviously, like these guys ain't getting any younger anymore. They're not 25, 26 years old um, anymore. And um, I don't know. It's just like the just the West seems like they're just so like there's so many teams I can look that look at that are better than them. Um, I'm curious if Clay Thompson's gonna um, be able to kind of replicate kind of like the Clay Thompson of old. Like obviously, he was averaging 21 points I think the last couple of seasons. But can he get up there and get his scoring up a little bit more? more now that Jordan Poole's gone and they kind of like, all right, you guys are still going to be the mainstays. You guys still, you still have young guys and like Jonathan Kaminga, who's I'm um, hoping is going to take a, take on a bigger role. Um, obviously Draymond um, with his screen setting and his passing and being able to um, get the other guys open um, with Steph, uh, with Steph and clay, uh, you know, what you're going to get from Steph. I, I can see Steph averaging nearly 30 points a game again this season. And I'm praying for it for him being on my fantasy team. But um, they don't call they don't call him the human torch for nothing. So I think Steph is just gonna keep being Steph, barring any um, any unforeseen circumstances. But uh, I think Golden State is gonna be good. They're kind of um, just that like that model of consistency when those guys are healthy, which is also gonna be a big question. Like how many like with these guys getting older, how much is injuries gonna play a factor? And especially like with Chris Paul, who's not getting any younger, but. Um, no, but yeah, I could definitely see Golden State being like in the the top half of the Western Conference at the at the absolute best. Um, I think actually no top five at the absolute um, worst, I guess. But um, that's just barring any um, any unforeseen circumstances. So um, Golden State seems like there's going to be like the that model of consistency if they just remain healthy. No, I'm ag- I'm with you. I I I agree with you. Um, but there is a couple questions that I have with this roster. You mentioned Chris Paul. Trade for him in that. I mean, he would. They he was involved in that. I, he, what he was involved in the Bradley Beal trade. Then they trade Jordan Poole for him. Uh, and it's just a weird fit to me because it's like, I mean, Chris Paul has had the quotes this off season that he wasn't going to start. Or that I mean, he's had the quotes that like he wants to start and like he doesn't see himself being benched. But I just think with the construction of the roster that they have right now, he's probably going to be that sixth, seventh guy off the bench. Um, he's weird from like a stylistic fit because it's like they run, they are a motion heavy, read and react offense. And like the way Chris Paul plays, he likes to slow the game down. He likes to think. 17 steps ahead of the defense, which not that anyone in Golden State does, and Draymond's very good at orchestrating the offense, and he's very smart and um, is able to read a bunch of things ahead of time. But, like, with Chris Paul, it's a lot of, like, slowing it down. I'm in the pick and roll. Um, I'm, I'm having I'm having the offense akin to what I want to do. And, like, play obviously play off that Chris Paul's one of the best passers of this generation, um, and he's – proven like time and time again when he was in Phoenix, when he was in uh, Houston, when he was in Oklahoma City, et cetera, et cetera. He just makes those teams better and he makes the, he makes the structure of their offense better. But like with this Golden State team, like they're not going to adjust just for him. I mean, so that's where it's like there's a little bit of a question mark with that. I mean, I'm sure that Steve Kerr has come out and said that like he diversifies what they want to do and like they, they felt a little not predictable, but like 
they needed to diversify like what they were doing offensively. And so obviously Chris Paul and what he likes to do in the pick and roll and stuff like that. Uh, he, he helps that, but like how reliant, like what's the, what's going to be the balance, you know, like what's going to be the balance of like, especially when he and Steph and Claire are on the floor together, whenever they have, they have those lineups together, like what's that going to look like? And like, how is Steph or not Steph, how is Chris going to be off the ball and how's that going to impact spacing? Like our team teams kind of sh- showed their hand last playoffs that they just didn't respect him from the three point line. And so, like, how much are they going to play off him? How much is that going to disrupt the flow? How much is it going to that going to disrupt passing lanes? Whatever the case is, how is that going to disrupt the motion um, from the other four guys or three guys, whomever? Like, how is that going to impact everything offensively? So that's a question that I have for them. Another one's defensively. Like, this team is just not good at the point of attack. They're not. Steph is like a fine defender i think he's been a little bit underrated over his last several years as a defensive player and like what he can bring to that end but like he's not going to be a guy who is your stopper at the point of attack clay thompson has dealt with multiple knee injuries over the last three four years and he's yeah, lost I, he's lost some lateral quickness on that end like that's not gonna that that's not that's not like that's not something that's not that should be your primary option right? if i could speak that's great yeah he's not that all defensive team clay thompson yeah. anymore He's fine defensively against like bigger twos and like threes and like smaller fours. Like he can hold his own there. But like if I'm asking him to guard the point of attack 35 feet, it's just a tough ask from him at this stage of his career. Chris Paul is just not good defensively anymore. Like he's just not that point of attack guy. I mean, he sure he was an all NBA caliber defender in his prime. That's just not where he's at right now. Um, he can still get steals, he can still deflect def- like create deflections, but he's not that all all-encompassing defender at least like mobility wise but like they're going to be asking a lot from wiggins they're going to be asking a lot from draymond green not even at the point of attack but just in general defensively he's kind of like their backbone and what they do on that end they're going to be asking a lot of gary pate who's now healthy um they're going to be asking a lot of jonathan kuminga who looked awesome in the preseason he was phenomenal and he's probably my x factor spoiler alert in terms of like what he can provide in terms of like a ninth or tenth guy off the bench, they're going to be asking a lot of Moses Moody on that end, who's who I think will probably crack the rotation at a certain spot this year, entering his third season. So, like, they're asking a lot of some of these guys defensively and just to guard multiple spots and be multiple places at once. And um, I just don't know how that's going to hold itself up if you can't guard at the point of attack. I mean, they still have solid defenders, but – I don't know. I'm just I'm worried about their defense. Like that's just my biggest like your best three or two of your best three players are at the stage of their career where they can just stay in front of guys consistently. Um Draymond's a different case study, but then like Chris Paul, who's probably gonna get closing minutes or who'll be a closer in certain times, also can't stay in front of anybody. Like what how much how much of a role is Gary Payton gonna have to have? How much of a role is Jonathan Kuming gonna have to have? Just to keep it afloat. How much of a yeah. uh Wiggins? I mean, we, we saw Wig, what Wiggins did defensively in the finals against uh Boston, but like what type of role, like how much are you gonna ask from him? I mean, he he didn't play a lot last year due to some personal reasons, which um I'm, I think all of that's better now. I'm, I hope at least I hope all of that is better. Uh, but he missed most of the season. Like what what exactly is this team was fourth in defense or not fourth in defense, fourteenth in defense, kind of with Wiggins missing most of the season with the unevenness with with Draymond and Kuminga didn't have much of a role in the rotation. So it's like there may be room for improvement, but you just also acquired a guy uh who is again thirty seven or thirty eight, like who's gonna get important minutes. Not that Jordan Poole didn't because he did at times, but like what's that all gonna mean? I have, yeah. quite, I have a lot of questions with this team. Clearly. Yeah, and then a bunch of those guys that you named, and um, I believe Kayvon, Kayvon Looney is still on the team, so like that's yeah. still another guy to, to keep yeah. an eye out for. But that's another guy that you got to think. There's only five spots you can have on the uh, – five players you can have on the floor at a time. Yeah. So when it comes to um, getting into those uh, crunch time minutes, a couple of guys get out to sit down. And, and Looney might get closing minutes, but he – I mean, he's, he's not someone you're asking to guard – like you're not asking him to switch out. He's just a bigger body that could, that can check. Like, I mean, he's a little undersized, but who can check like the Sabonis of the world, like he did in the playoffs, like the Anthony Davises of the world. You're not going to be yeah. asking 
guard out in the perimeter like some of these other guys. But no, yeah, I see your point. Yeah. So um, I think for Kaminga, um, I did like the uh, um, bringing him up as a potential X factor. And I think if he's going to be coming off the bench with Chris Paul, I think that's going to do wonders for him on on the yeah. offensive end um like look at what chris paul has done when he's had like young guys to work with like when he was in okc look at like sga for example and a couple of other guys who were out there um always like um i always think chris paul is like more of that on-court coach now later in his career and i think he should try to embrace that kind of role because when he got to phoenix it was a young team and, like those guys ended up making the finals and all that stuff so like chris paul at this point in his career can do a, such a great job as elevating like the young guys on your team, um, especially in that situation where it can really be like a Kaminga and uh, Chris Paul pick and roll at, coming out of that second unit. Cause I think Kaminga's like six, like six, eight, six, nine, probably six, 10, like dude's huge. Um, so it could be like a, a dollar, like a dollar value. Amari Sotomayor, <laughs> uh, Chris Paul uh, has a chance to work with him throughout the season. Um <laughs> But I use I use that comparison very loosely. So, um, but but either way, I think that this team has the like. I feel like it's kind of like the same thing with Phoenix. Like these guys can probably pour it on offensively, but they're probably going to give up a lot of points on on the defensive side of the ball, even if they still are looked at as a really good team. So that might be their kryptonite. Just um, just that might just be the story of their season, um, because there may be times where your better defenders may just not be able to get stops. So, like, yeah. how are you going to be able? How are you going to be able to write that? That's the issue. That's the issue. And again, like, kind of to your point, there's not many teams. There, there's multiple teams in the West that kind of have a similar problem in terms of like their lack of just capable multi-positional defenders who who can do a lot of things. And not, I mean, Golden State again, they have Wiggins, who's a good defender. Clay can still guard maybe two or three positions. Jonathan Kuminga can Moses Moody projects to be able to. He hasn't really done a whole lot yet. Um, I did like how they addressed the backup five spot with Dario Saric. I think he could be an interesting hub. He's another guy who I think can benefit a lot with Chris Paul, um, at least on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, Brandon Pajipski, who was a rookie they drafted at Santa Clara. I'm interested to see how he does. Um, but – I like where do you sit? Like I'm trying to figure out in my head. Like I have this team. I think is like the fourth seed right now in the West. But there's so much. There's variance with this team because again they were sixth last year. The West in certain spots did get deeper, or at least they like they got better. And I think the yeah. both got deeper. So where where is your kind of head at? Do you see them vaulting to a fourth seed, five seed? Like where? Because it's like it feels like this team is just going to be also be pissed off. About yeah. last year and everything that happened. Um, not that it was again, one of their best players was directly involved with one of their worst situations. But I just feel like they're gonna be pissed off about losing in the second round to the Lakers and kind of kind of having an unfruitful taste in their mouth. Like what where do you see this team? I would say to like just like address that, like, yeah, there's not a whole lot of drama that came out of the season for Golden State, but um, whether or not they want to play with it, yeah. Whether or not they like they want to like tell themselves they're playing with a chip on their shoulder, I don't believe that's gonna really that's gonna really matter at the end of the day. Um, I think that there are some teams out there that are better than Golden State, but I do I do definitely see like even judging it from the Western Conference standings last year, they were pretty much like a game and a half back between being the sixth seed and being the four seed. Um, like the top three seeds were kind of set in stone, but I could easily see Golden State like on their best on their best day. Everybody remains healthy. They can be a top four seed or even argue to be in the conversation for a top three seed um, just because Steph Curry is that good. And just because if the guys remain healthy um, and uh, pretty much like those those guys would be able to just like uh, just have Steph put you guys in the backpack and like you got like if there's an off night from clay or off night from someone, you got Steph going to be looking to get 40. He's probably going to try to get himself another MVP. He's playing like in the last couple of years anyway. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, like how is the defense going to look? How is the fit with Chris Paul going to look? Um, but I do see like at the absolute best, they're a top three seed arguably, but at the absolute worst, they'll be around how they were last year being like top six seed, maybe like better, like the, like the team, the on-court product, 
may mean that the team's better than what the numbers say. If I'm um, just if I'm wording that right, but um, but yeah, I feel like Golden State's definitely a uh, definitely a team to kind of keep an eye out for in terms of out there in the West. Right. Um, did you also see the Jordan Poole quote? Or not? It was like someone the rumor Jordan Poole quote for him. I mean, that's what what led to Draymond punching him. Did you did you see about that? Well, no, I did not see that. It was like he. I think again, this is like rumored. It's no one's going to confirm. Uh, alleged. This. Yeah, it's alleged, but uh, Jordan Poole said that Draymond's an expensive backpack for 30, which expensive backpack for, for uh, Steph Curry. Again, oh. rumored. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't really remember how that got leaked, but it got leaked like a few weeks ago. And kind of just a funny quote. Not that oh really at this point, but yeah. Man, I you punched his lights out of that. Your backpack, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh man, I mean, was that warrant and punching his lights out though? No, <laughs> I, I don't think what so. it was. It probably was not warranted. Yeah, like you, I'm not even gonna like. I feel like that's kind of like that's more or less it should be looked at as old news anyway. But I think it is for the rest for the rest of both of, until like Draymond retires or anything like that. We may we may even see like a beef history video and like. A good like maybe five to six years after Jermon Green's long retirement, he may just be on on TV just trash talking Jordan Poole still. I wonder how many shots Jordan Poole's going to take against the Warriors. Like how many points is he going to score? Like what's the revenge? I, like? I I honestly think he will probably hit his career high in Golden State. <laughs> It'll probably be a day like Andrew Wiggins isn't playing, um, and like he's he's taking like 30, 35 shots, Jeez. and like they. They miraculously win by like four. Did you see? Not that this tour turned into like the Jordan Poole episode, but uh, he they, it was during one of their preseason games, and he took like two two shots, and he I mean like two open shots, and he made it. But Denny Advia was like wide open on the opposite wing, and like they went to the bench, and someone leaked the audio of like what the conversation was, and. I can't remember like what Jordan said, but uh, then he was like, nice. and Jordan's like, nah, dude, we're good anyways. Like, I made the shots or whatever it was. It's just such a Jordan Poole response. Anyways, any final thoughts on this? Uh, I am excited to see Steph Curry just um, like pretty much go against the test of time, being 35 years old and still putting up, uh, still being one of the greatest shooters and one of the best players on the planet. One of the greatest shooters. He probably is the greatest shooter. He, he nah, he definitely, he definitely is. Um, I would say definitely solidified that with the all-time three-point record. Um, I'm not like I'm still. I'm gonna wait until he retires to say he's the greatest point guard of all time because I, I kind of don't like. Giving, oh, spicy! I, I I don't like giving like I don't I don't like giving certain players those certain those kinds of titles while they're still playing. Um, I still feel like no matter how much they've they've proven throughout their playing career, you always can improve while you're still playing. So like, um, that's why I really don't like ever talking about like the gold debate with like LeBron and Jordan and all that. Um, Cause like there's plenty of sides, but I would say, um, I would say Steph before, like by the time his career is done, he's probably, he's probably going to make himself a really good case against magic. And he, and the thing is like golden state has our fans of golden state have chances like, um, should be happy hearing Steph acknowledging himself as like the greatest point guard of all time. So like, yeah. as like you want him to keep saying things like that as uh because odds are it's going to be kind of like 2022 all over again. If you want to win another championship, it's gonna it's gonna be with Steph Curry on that roster. It will, yeah. There's no way where they win a title without Steph. I honestly don't know if when Steph retires. When's the next time they may even sniff an NBA Finals? To be honest with you, NBA is weird. Who knows? But you're right. Um. Yeah. Thank y'all for watching. Please go check out VendettaSportsMedia.com. Please go check out all of our other season previews on the YouTube page. We have them up on the site. Please go check all of those out when you can. MLB, NHL, NFL, college football, all in the thick of all in the thick of things. Like and subscribe once again. My name is Matt. This is Germani. Thank y'all. Have a good night. Have a good week. Thank y'all for watching.